Ini adalah prestasi Bursa Malaysia semalam selepas spekulasi berkenaan dengan darurat bertiup kencang. Kesannya kepada ekonomi dan juga Bursa Malaysia dapat kita lihat situ dengan cukup jelas. Semalam FBN KLCI, KLCI turun lebih empat mata ditutup pada 1,494.64 mata. Dan ringgit juga ditutup lebih rendah pada RM4.15 berbanding dolar Amerika. Ini dibandingkan dengan RM4.14 pada sesi tengah hari dan juga pagi. Ini antara kesan ketidaktentuan politik kita lihat kepada penanda-penanda aras utama ekonomi negara seperti Bursa Malaysia dan juga ringgit. Saya mau berbincang dengan lebih lanjut. Ketidaktentuan yang masih lagi berterusan ini terhadap ekonomi negara dan juga sentimen pelabur kita. Saya bersama dengan Chan Said, Ketua Pakar Ekonomi IQI Juai dan saya mahu mengalihkan perbualan ini ke dalam bahasa Inggeris. Chan, thanks so much for joining us. Besides um, the slide we saw in the Bursa Malaysia and the Ringgit, so how is this ongoing political uncertainty and the speculation of emergency, how is it affecting the economy? I think at the moment everybody is... Uh... Uh, looking at it, uh, the government's position and global investors are more interested in macroeconomic stability and see in the last nine years I have been in Malaysia, it is always the macroeconomic stability that have drive the economy. So I think uh, uh, Malaysian government and Malaysian uh, people have the capacity to come out of this crisis and that will augur uh, a good omen uh, for global investors at the macro level. Interesting you mentioned the macro level, the macro economy, because many are saying that the performance of Bursa Malaysia and Ringgit, as we've seen, the performances of this um, indicators, the Bursa and the Ringgit, they do not accurately represent the whole state of the economy. What do you think? And uh, if not, what would be a more accurate measure of how well or how badly the economy is doing right now? I think there is no correlation between Bursa's uh, variable and the Ringgit variable. Both these variables are very different and both have got different set of outlook. So I think the more, in, more interesting impact of the economy that we, we have witnessed, that aggregate demand is coming back. Even when COVID was going on in China, the aggregate demand was picking up. And post-COVID, we have all seen how Chinese economy have come back very strongly. With the same premise, we foresee that Malaysian economy continues to be on the global investor's radar. Aggregate demand is picking up. The other variable is the energy demand is still, you know, is pretty strong in this part of the world. So there are other variables to look at, you know, uh, instead of looking at Bursa or Ringgit. And for, for that matter, Ringgit has appreciated against USD 6% this year. Mm. So I think so how... it's a different sort of variables when you're talking about Bursa and we're talking about Ringgit outlook. Right, understand. So how does all this, all the advancements, so to say, that you've mentioned, how um, have all this been felt by the common man on the street, the common Malaysian? I think if you look at it in the last seven to eight months, not only Malaysia, global economy has changed dramatically. After COVID, we have seen 150 countries being locked down. 80% of the global economy was, was locked down, and now economies are slowly coming back. But not all the economies. We have seen Europe, if you pick up today's financial time, Europe is struggling with COVID. But if you look at Asia and ASEAN countries, they are still, you know, managing it well. I'm not saying completely 100%, but they are still, you know, uh, they are doing better than other advanced economies, especially US, Japan, and Europe. At the moment, I think the global economy is, is uh, driven by the interplay between economics and epidemiology. And policymakers and investors are weighing the options what central banks have provided the unprecedented liquidity uh, in order to you know, foresee the second and third wave. So global economy will continue to stay in a very fragile zone. The economic fragilities are going up. The geopolitical risk is going up and only those economies will come out stronger where they have been able to control a pandemic, this COVID-19, and the aggregate demand has picked up strongly moving forward. Well, many are mentioning this you know, V-shaped recovery, V meaning you know, straight down and straight up. Some are predicting that we will see a V-shaped recovery in the Malaysian economy uh, maybe starting next year after COVID-19 has subsided. Do you think we'll see a V-shaped recovery or is it not as straightforward as that? I think I, I don't see a V-shaped recovery in Malaysia, but I expect 
a U-shaped recovery. Many people have been saying that Malaysia will achieve a GDP growth rate of 6 and 7 percent. Uh, pragmatically speaking, uh, this COVID will continue till uh, 2021 globally. Mm. And we expect Malaysian economy to uh, trade between uh, 3 and 4 percent uh, in 2021. I don't see Malaysian economy uh, to be trading between 6 and 7 percent. But the good part is that oil prices would be going up next year because of geopolitical risk and uh, because of US dollar going down. That will benefit, that will be beneficial for Malaysian economy. The second good part is that palm oil uh, prices would be hovering between 25,000 and 3,000 uh, uh, ringgit uh, per ton. Again, that will, that will benefit the palm oil producers in Malaysia. Uh, already the uh, Chinese foreign minister in two weeks back uh, uh, press release, uh, he mentioned that we are ready to take more palm oil from Malaysia. So I think Malaysian economy will have a U-shaped recovery and the GDP for next year will be between uh, 3 and 4%. Well, I want to go back to, to this, you know, political, political uncertainty, if I may. You know, there have been, of course, um, numerous debates uh, as to what happened yesterday. Nothing official was informed, nothing official, uh, in fact, was confirmed. Um, of course, you've got, you know, parties on both sides uh, supporting it and also being against it. Well, for one, former Prime Minister Tun Mahathir Mohamad claims, he himself claims, and this is his opinion, that if emergency is indeed declared, and I quote, the market will collapse completely. That's what he said. Do you agree with this? Do you think this is a fair opinion? I think it's quite premature to say that whether the market will collapse or not. But if I were to look at from the global perspective, the markets are volatile throughout uh, this year. And this volatility will continue uh, to drag on till 2021. So it's not about Malaysia. I expect uh, you know, markets will, you know, take a little correction. That is understandable because of uh, questionable uh, macroeconomic uh, stability. But other than that, I don't see that uh, economy or the market is go going to collapse uh, at a very fast pace. So what do investors want to see now for them to feel better, at least feel better about Malaysia and continue to invest in the country? They need two things. One is macroeconomic stability that encompasses political stability, financial stability, and policy framework consistency. And the third is economic confidence. Right now, economic confidence has taken a backseat. So I think investors, global investors, they are looking at two variables, macroeconomic stability and economic confidence. And in the last 12 years, what we have seen in global economy, two factors have emerged significantly. One is economic confidence, the other is fair. These two variables, the non-economic variables, have taken a huge uh, significance in the macro equation. So I think investors are looking at macroeconomic stability and economic confidence. That is the key for Malaysian uh, growth story uh, next year. Hmm. Again, I want to go back to the people. Now, amidst you know, ongoing uncertainties, um, how can businesses, especially small businesses, businesses in Malaysia, uh, protect themselves? Because we, we do not know when this will end. What can they do now to protect themselves? I think this COVID-19 has taught uh, not only Malaysian SMEs, but global SMEs, uh, three things. One is you need to have a contingency plan. Number two, you need to have strong cash flows. And number three, you have to upgrade your skill set all the time. So many SMEs have been you know, taken uh, off guard, especially with this COVID, because they were not prepared. So going forward, I think uh, SMEs, they need to have a contingency plan. When I talk about contingency plan, it means they need to have plan A, B, B, and C in place. Secondly, cash has become very important. Banks lending throughout uh, the globe, you know, the credit cycle is on, on, on the back seat. So I think cash is very important. Cash flow, cash flow for SMEs are, are the key. And the third is you need to upgrade your skill set all the time. Productivity is the key. And the only variable that drives the economy is the productive labor force. So I think these three key, key, uh, three key variables are very important for SMEs, not only in Malaysia, but globally speaking. Uh, regarding the political uncertainty, I think for the past few days or even weeks, we've been asking um, numerous people, we've asked epidemiologists, we've asked the people um, as to what they think would be the best case scenario moving forward. What next, I think, is the best situation for, for stability in that particular field, you know, epidemiology, the handling of the COVID-19 pandemic, etc. So I want to ask you now, in terms of purely from an economic standpoint, 
what do you think the best case scenario moving forward is? What, what do you want to see happen next with regards to this political uncertainty so that the economy can you know, get back on its feet or at least can uh, grow from strength to strength, especially after being heavily inf uh, affected by COVID? I think what I have been reading in newspapers for the last six to seven months, uh, the government looks totally committed to, uh, to take control of this uh, pandemic, which is important. So you have two choices. One is healthcare and the other is economics. And what many countries have done, like uh, successful uh, countries like China, they try to control this COVID first and then they focused on economy. And look at China right now. China is the only economy globally where you have a GDP growth of 5%. Name a single country in Europe where, where you have a GDP growth. So I think the government is uh, having a trade-off between uh, pandemic and uh, economics, the economy. I think they will, once they have a strategy uh, for this COVID, I think the economy will continue to follow that. And I don't, see, I don't see any reason that Malaysia will not be able to do it. They have done it since March and they will continue to do it uh, as we move along. Right. Finally, Sean, the, the budget is coming up, I think, about two weeks from now. What do you think the budget should prioritise? I think, in my opinion, it should be uh, people-centric, uh, growth-driven and confidence-focused. That is, that is a key there because right now, not only local investors but global investors, they are looking very closely, especially the Malaysian economic outlook, what will, it will be uh, post-budget, and that is the key. Alright, thank you so much Shan. Shan Said, Ketua Pakar Ekonomi IQI Juai membincangkan sedikit sebanyak berkenaan dengan kesan ketidaktentuan politik yang kita hadapi khasnya sejak semalam terhadap ekonomi dan juga sentimen pelampur.